What is up YouTube and welcome back to another episode of Oxygen Not Included Season 4 with the new Frost Pack. Now there are quite a few changes, we'll see them as we go. Apologies for the delay on this, just been sorting out a few of my other videos. Of course the vote did show that we're going to move now videos to every other day and see how that goes. Hopefully it will help you guys find time to watch what you want to watch. Of course I do have a lot of other things that I can post. Uh, I'm going to start posting them probably in the members area, so at least then uh, a membership is useful. Maybe the Minecraft series and a few others as well move over to membership. In the meantime, the first thing we've got to do here is survive the cold. The very first thing I need to jump to is the wood burner, which allows us to burn the wood, as it's called no longer lumber. To create heat now as far as i'm aware it doesn't actually heat up the area per se or at least it does but because of how cold it is it won't make much difference but what it will do will allow your duplicates to go up to it to get a bit of warmth that gives them the ability or the trait to uh refuse frostbite frostbite obviously is the thing that they can get if you leave them cold for too long also it's important to note that I would suggest obviously a wood burner near or around the beds as well because you don't want them getting cold when they're sleeping because they will have broken sleep. So ordinarily I go with a digger, a builder and a researcher. This time I changed it up a little bit and I went for one builder and two diggers. Of course as we move forward I will establish what we need and when. There are a lot of new items in this release, a lot of new things you can see there, a research, just like a hourglass, that basically gives you free research items randomly, I believe. Uh, the plants there you can see are the aloe vera ferns, they turn carbon dioxide into oxalite, so they will be our oxygen production for now, there is no algae of course, it is about negative 30 to 50 degrees everywhere. There are new critters, and I'm going to be farming them ASAP. Specifically, the foxes that you see, the, the faux fox. Uh, there's one on the screen. Their antlers are wood, so that is another way of getting wood. You don't see any trees, and wood is critical to keeping us warm at the minute. For the very beginning of the game, we're going to be using wood to do most things. The ladders are made of wood, which makes sense, actually, because for the first time, even though they look like they're always wood, they're actually made of wood. And as soon as I get another uh, material, I will then rip out all of the wooden things that I don't need so we can get that wood back. The tiles you see there that are wooden are also good insulators, so they're good to use around a bedroom or a bathroom or something where you want to try and keep that heat in. There's a lot of new fauna and stuff. We'll get to that as we actually plant them because trying to go through it, this isn't a sort of an update of the mod or the... DLC it's actually a series so we'll, we'll see that as we go but rest assured um, it's reasonably simple and you will see it pretty soon because a lot of the items that are new are specifically designed to actually help with this brand new challenge we are on the lab map the difficulty settings are as per the previous uh, most of the items are default though hunger and uh, germs, yes, no, sorry, hunger and oxygen are turned up in difficulty. Ever just, just one level. So they use more and, rec and eat more. So I have made a bedroom and chucked a random wall in there. Making the walls out of snow seems to be the go-to. Now, ordinarily I wouldn't think that that makes any sense because of the temperatures, but it looks like the game's not so much punishing you for them being cold all the time as long as you give them some warmth to get rid of the frostbite so actually building the base out of snow should work i mean it is a good insulator obviously igloos let's be honest they've worked for many 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 years um so yeah i've chucked that bedroom together briefly to give us the morale boost and then we need to do it with the bathrooms as well the lavatories or whatever you call it from wherever you're from so we'll get some of those in. Now I will need to put a sink with them as well. It doesn't count as bathroom unless you put at least one water, uh, basin or sink in there. Now one thing you've probably noticed off the bat is of course there is no liquid. And that was massive to me. Uh, opening and unlocking there we unlock a new... 
yeah, you can see that was my excitement. Uh, a new visual there on the storage chests that we use a lot of. There is also this kettle looking thing, which is basically it turns the ice into the liquid, the water. So we'll of course be doing that. There is also a warm jumper there as well to give somebody the ability to be warmer for longer. Uh, obviously it doesn't last forever, but it will do us some benefits. So the base build that we're going to be having is similar to before. If anybody wants to see a different version or a different base or has other ideas that they want to see me try, please do let me know. Setting up the guys briefly, that would be the digger, the uh, builder as well. Obviously digging to make sure that if we come across anything harder than snow and ice, that they are able to achieve that. And they're very happy with the little hats, so that's good. Also, I don't know if anybody's noticed yet, there are a lot of new hairdos as well, which is quite cool. I haven't seen my favourite yet. There is one that's uh, a proper, like, mullet style. It's really cool. It looks good. Uh, we'll get that there shortly. Now, the machine on the right-hand side, I can't demolish that and get it out of my way yet until we've upgraded our builder to demolition. It's only the third level. It shouldn't be too difficult to get to, to be honest, but it's not actually in our way currently. We have a lot more building to do before that's a problem. Now, as far as I'm aware, the kettle, I did waste a lot of time, uh, which I'll skip over for your benefit, but trying to figure out how you get the liquid out of it. They just do it automatically, so they go up to it, put a bottle underneath, and empty it into there. Um, and it's similar to how they use the pumps, the uh, water pumps that you would normally do in the beginning of a game. But obviously you have to have the ice in there and a bit of wood to melt the ice into the water and then they can use that. Now there is a mod that allows you to use this to melt all of the ice into all of the different variants of liquids. But for now um, this is just, it's not the modded version so it's just water. Okay, so moving the base over into the center now so we can get some normality on what I'm used to doing. The center part here is a lot larger than normal. Usually I use the printer as the center and go down either side of it. Because of the wooden tray, I don't know what it's supposed to be called, but the thing that, 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 that stores your, your wood... Uh, but because of that, obviously I've gone wider. So it is going to be a little bit different to what I'm used to. You're going to have this lot much larger central area and then the buildings going off from there. Now I'm going to start with smaller buildings, but eventually we'll increase them. The mods are in the description. There are some missing from the previous series. Quite a lot actually because of course they haven't been caught up yet. One of them is the room size mod. So we won't be having massive rooms for the critters. Although we're allowed a lot of critters because that mod still works. Uh, we're not allowed to have like a 96 square room I don't believe. But as we play along I'm hoping that some mods will be made available to us. And I will add them and update the list that I've already saved in Steam, again with the link in the description. Now a lot of them are making the mess because they're not using the toilets, that's because it took them a little while to actually put the dirty in the toilets. As soon as they've done that they should start working. The liquids we can mop up and eventually put them somewhere else. I would imagine though that if you just leave them alone they will freeze. With the rooms moved to the centre where I want them, and now giving us the morale boost, I've just thrown down some basic power to get into the first tier of research, and that is the blue research. So just looking where I want to go, and also looking for the new items. The new items from the download content, of course, are depicted by little blue ribbons on them, like the yellow ones are from the spaced out. There is a lot less... Uh, researchers to do. There's, it's not made a massive difference in the research queues, to be honest with you. There's not loads of items. It's more about the actual area that you're starting on and the stuff within it and the critters and the plants that come along with it, all of which have their very useful and own abilities that we will need to be using. So where are we going to start? Usually I would start going down the food route um, one massive advantage to this map is that your food is not going to go off ever because everywhere it is, it's, well, negative 30 degrees or so. So a fridge to the freezer is not a priority here. 
actually the opposite is we need to get tools and machines and tiles unlocked specifically tiles airlock tiles and things like that so that we can start managing our oxygen the oxygen itself is of course going to stay near the top carbon dioxide near the bottom we need to mitigate that and make sure that we are able to survive without the ease of algae to give us a high pressure in oxygen i can't promise that we won't struggle um because usually using the distiller things that turn algae into oxygen give you such a high pressure that it pushes all the carbon dioxide down that's not the case here we are relying on oxalite which we all should know by now is very very quick to dissipate also it means that i'm going to have to be careful on how many duplicates i accept at the minute we have four i'll probably go to five and leave it there for a while until we have some stability of course we can jump electrolysis uh, to turn water into oxygen and hydrogen like we have in the past but there's the other problem right there is no liquid to do that with now this is the lab map and what it does is it's got the central of the lab map is just this frozen core which is very difficult and surrounded by ice cinnabar and snow as you can see but if we get to the edges of that there will be an abyssalite core and then of course there is normal biomes past there i'm not aware that they're going to be any warmer it's still freezing cold but there are many others the map is ginormous because it is the lab map so we know that and unless anybody requests a different map the lab map is the best for doing mega bases anyway i'm not going to promise a mega base per se for this because it depends on the ideas ideally we just want to get a sustainability and get them to survive what i'm actually going to do is we're doing a, an end game that is different to the previous so it will not be the tier for this one the temporal tier will not be the end game for this series the end game for this series will be one of the other two now the first option is to make your guys really really happy with morale and put a monument i think it is and the other way to complete is to do the research through the relics now i'm going down the road of the happiness and the monument for this build uh, sorry for this series because the other one requires a lot of space travel to go to the different planets to get the relics from space and from asteroids themselves so i feel like that would be a lot closer to what we already did uh, the happiness and then of course the monument to me is the most different of the end games here let me know in the comments what you think whether you prefer that or not of course we can just invent our own i mean i know a lot of people have done where you've just done oh we do it for so many cycles we could do that too how far can we get in 100 500 cycles or whatever but i want to make sure that we get to see all of this and of course my part of the game that i love the most is the farming ranching more than anything so them little foxes will be ranched as soon as possible there are also some giant hippo cow looking things uh, furry cows i'll be ranching those too very shortly i would imagine um because they are things that we need to get on top of i don't know another way of getting wood um to help us survive with the fuel and stuff of course there is a bonbon tree which is a massive tree that gives you nectar and wood but i at this time i've got no idea where it is or how to get it whether it's even on this asteroid i don't know okay so now i've got my bearings a bit more with what expected of me i've chucked in an additional toilet as well because there's four of us and there's only three um, and then you can see on the left and right hand sides I've started building out a room setup. Now all of that is snow. I'm not going to be using the wood until I am doing a specific building or a specific room that needs it, i.e. requires insulation. Again, I'm not convinced that they're not okay, although they're cold. Let me look at the smile on his face. Bert's happy, so why shouldn't we be? So yeah, what we need to do is follow this sort of train of thought here. Try and make it symmetrical or whatever you want to call it as best I can. 
The rooms will be made larger both on the left and right hand sides when I require it, if I require it. But for now, I'm going to replace a lot of this wood with snow. I don't know why I'm doing that. Oh, I do, because I am moving those from the centre to the edges. So you can see here on the edges, left and right, that's where the bedrooms and bathrooms will be. The centre will be left open, similar, similarly to what I've done before. Uh, what will be in there, likely it will be storage containers now. You can see I'm using them, but I haven't actually upgraded them yet to the fancy skins because I forgot. But I will. They look quite cool, little purple and uh, orange polka dot ones. But there are quite a lot of new tiles. There also is a lot of decor. So all of the doors from the original that, that you can see in the computer chairs, the posters, the globes that were decoration in the game that you could deconstruct but you could never build it, you can now build that too. Now, other than making your research room a bit fancier with a bit of decor, I don't see any point to the items. Um, but, of course, the skins already existed, so it made sense for the developers to make them buildable, because why not? And also, a lot of people that are better at decorating than, than me uh, can probably use them to make some really cool things. As you can see, a wood fire there, and then some beds either side of it. The range on the wood fire only allows you to fit those to either side. If the double bed, sorry, bunk bed mod was installed, you could technically get eight per fire, eight people per fire, but it's not available that I can see. Um, so that'll do. That's four people. We've only got four. And I mean, if I do another one, which I'm doing directly below, that'll be eight. And I'm not going to eight duplicates anytime soon because oxygen dissipates very quickly. The oxalite sublimates into oxygen fast. Uh, and then that oxygen gets turned into carbon dioxide even faster from the duplicates. So until I've got something to give us a better oxygen source or a better carbon dioxide to oxygen source, uh, I'm likely not going to go above five duplicates. Look at that. Almost looks like I know what I'm doing. Maybe. Possibly. Um, so, bedroom and bathroom, left and right, four and four. The bathrooms have wood burners as well. I don't think that's relevant. And, in fact, I will remove them uh, a bit later, likely. So, there is also a bit higher up. You can see where the roof or floor, whatever you want to call it, is double. That is just because of how I've built it. I wanted it to stay in line and be symmetrical. So the floor that has the printer on it and the wood storage is four tiles tall. The rest of them are three, which are smaller than I normally go, but again, I don't want it to be exactly the same as what we are used to. Now chucking in a mess hall, but it is the dumbest place to put it because really it needs to be in the top left of the base near the food source and the food storage. So I will move that shortly. Planter boxes are in place to start trying to grow some plants that are required. Uh, but I will actually move those because the plants that we're going to grow are the newer ones. The first ones we come across are the pike apples, which are basically the pineapples. They are required to feed the foxes that you can see, and they'll be the first thing that we ranch. After that, there are some plums that look like beetroot um, that also require... Oh, sorry, are required for the woolly cows, which are called... Magmoths or something? I can't remember now. We'll get to them anyway, don't worry. So you can see the structure of the base is in place. We've got power. The polka dot storage vessels are in as well. They look quite cool. That's the only one I've unlocked so far. So we'll obviously look at those as we get them. There are a lot of skins to unlock, to be honest. Um, Atmo suits and the like. I'm not sure yet. I need to check on previous saves, but the research tree is all different as well. I'm sure it is. Because the second and third level of research also already has some rocketry stuff. So I'm not sure what that's about. Unless I'm imagining it. Um, but we will get into that as soon as we get there. But of course, all the rocketry stuff is irrelevant when we're nowhere near a surface of any description. We know we need to dig straight up to get there. But actually, once I've got this in place, my priority will be looking for oxalite. But also, I've got to decide whether up, down, left or right, where is the closest part to some useful resources. And by useful resources, I mean things like sedimentary rock, granite, uh, ores of any description, copper ore and stuff like that to make some refined metals. 
Cinnabar is useful as a raw metal ore, of course, for doing most things, but you can't refine it into a metal, refined metal. Refining cinnabar goes into a liquid that is mercury, and as it stands, I'm not entirely sure what the purpose of that is, because I haven't got that far yet. And a bit further on now, you can see I've actually dug a bit of a crevice down where all the carbon dioxide is collecting. These Alophera ferns now have learnt what they are. So they do, in fact, absorb that carbon dioxide and create oxy, oxy light. So that is our source. So all of those at the bottom to turn all of the carbon dioxide into oxygen. And then we can push that into the base. Or at least it will automatically push itself because it will sublimate into the gas. See research is going forward nicely. Them, them storage boxes are quite cool. The next step really is to move outside of our base area and explore for new items. Both for materials, as I've said, um, but also for resources to continue growing. So we need a lot more of these pineapple seeds or pike apple seeds to make sure that that fox you can see there is fed. We can deconstruct this building now because I have gone through and upgraded them. You can also see that there is five and that is the cap for now. Look how happy they are. Everybody's so happy. Must be doing something right. Because with how cold it is, I would not be smiling like that personally. Now moving over the research chamber. Chamber? Yeah. Research bench because we need the supercomputer up so we're going for that level two now of research clearing out that center we'll leave that for just generating power with the mush machine above it and this will be our laboratory or research room or whatever you want to call that and finally with the research finished to the point where i wanted to get to which is the ability to ranch the animals the drop-offs the grooming stations and of course we will need the shearers now so you can see i am putting in the plants that they eat they eat both the fruit and the actual plant itself outside of all of them i'm going to put one of the what i like to call them as up arrows but these are the pickups so if you put one of those outside of the ranches it will automatically pick up any loose critters and send them to their retrospective rooms if you have one set up of course there is one on the left and one on the right room wise um this was because I didn't know if I was going to get loads of foxes and need to separate them or whether I'm going to get another animal. As it turns out, the one on the right will end up being the furry cow things, uh, but we haven't found those yet. But we will be very, very soon. In the meantime, we are at time for this first episode, so we are going to end it here. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, any comments are available to let me know how you're going on. If you are... Uh, playing along there is a code that I will paste also in the description um, That gives you everything identical to the map. I am playing on along with the settings as well uh, And the mods any questions or comments about what you want me to do or try and do let me know Once again, thank you for watching. Take care Goodbye